is what is the biggest mistake you've ever made? Oof, mommy, I'm, here's what I'll tell you. I'm sober 25 years. I made mistakes in my life, there's no question. Um, you know, the great thing about mistakes is when you take responsibility for them. That's the goal. <sighs> well, what a turd of a movie. I feel bad to be honest because Borderlands is one of those movies that genuinely makes you as an audience member, whether you're a fan of the franchise or not, stop and think to yourself, what the hell was going on in those pitch meetings and one of those adaptations that destroys any and all hope for that said IP and even worse, the fandom of that said IP and its chances of receiving a faithful or even if not that, at least a competently made adaptation for what is more than likely now a good decade. And I think what makes this downfall and blatant embarrassment even more jarring is because we as an audience live in a time and in a Hollywood era where even though it has definitely been lacking in the creativity department, has not been lacking in regards to successful video game adaptations in the past half decade. Video game adaptations have honestly never been more alive in this industry, and in a way, thriving no matter the form of media or size of the screen. From big time success stories on the big screen like Mortal Kombat, the Sonic franchise, and just last year with Super Mario Bros., to big time successes on the small screen like Arcane, which is receiving its second season later on this year, to the most recent success stories like The Last of Us and Fallout that just finished up a couple months ago, a video game adaptation that managed to find a middle ground of the casual audience and its already pre-established fandom, crafting a quality and enjoyable show with relatable characters that the majority of the audience could actually engage with. And while sure, there will always be a certain amount of flops in every single genre of media that you could point to in order to play devil's advocate, such as Uncharted, Detective Pikachu, or what I would believe to be the most egregious of all of these examples, The Halo Show. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I've never personally entertained those blokes masking themselves as professionals who wrote and produced the Halo series, but I do have a homie that has braved the no man's land of Paramount Plus pretty much halfway into season two until he was shot down by his own stupidity and bad judgment. Rip. But I do genuinely believe that Hollywood has had more hitters than shitters in the specific department as of late, with the general audience having to go back a decade or so in order to find true shit on a screen adaptations like Assassin's Creed with Michael Fassbender or Warcraft, which I personally do not even think was that bad. And while I for one have never played the Borderlands games or really any other games that haven't been drunk beer cups with the boys throughout the years of FIFA or actively hating my gaming experience with my mates while searching for that one dopamine hit of becoming the champion on Apex Legends, from the casting choices, which was pretty much demonized from the very beginning, to the world building or lack thereof, which is pretty irregular when you actually take a step back and realize that the company that produced this movie was the gaming studio itself. So you would think that some of the more competent and in-depth minds of the company would band together to ensure a more than fantastic and immersive experience for the fans that made this opportunity possible, right? Obviously not, which leads me to the main point of this video and the end of this yapping foreplay. The Borderlands movie should have been a streaming show. Now, usually there will be a point in the video where I would give a brief recap of the plot. But in this instance, in an instance where I believe the lack of marketing, a poorly timed release date, and most importantly, the damning word of mouth that spreads like an itch in our age of social media, pretty much killed this movie in regards to its theatrical run. And I'm not somebody who's going to change your mind, and frankly, I'm not somebody who is even willing to change your mind when it comes to that stance, and this is coming from a guy that preaches that people should spend more of their free time in the movie theater. But with Borderlands becoming a more embarrassing flop than the likes of The Fall Guy or Furiosa, and with that by proxy, holding the title of the biggest embarrassment and flop of the year when it comes to blockbuster movies, it is not a good look, and shows the blatant skill issue from the time this idea was even brought to the table. But you know what idea I do think would have worked in that brain dead void of a conference room? An 8 episode, 40 to 50 minute show, following characters that while maybe miscast, a show that follows characters in what would more than likely be a character driven show, so the characters will at least have the opportunity to indulge the audience and its fandom that it's reaching out to, giving the actor to character portrayals enough time to develop an actual relationship with the audience by either making these characters their own, 
or giving the writers enough time to flesh out the characters in a more in-depth manner in order to get the audience on board. An 8 episode, 40 to 50 minute show that allows the time for a world as unique and unexplored as the Borderlands series some time to breathe and feel lived in, a form of media that has the time to develop some of the more nuanced aspects of the world that they're adapting, and a form of media that opens the horizons for a more fulfilled vision of all of what the source material has to offer. But more importantly, again, a form of media that I think best suits for the game that it's adapting overall. But for the audience that has been invested in this IP for over a decade, an IP that deserved to be handled with more care and respect than what was given. As you all might have noticed by what's been playing on your screen for the last two to three minutes, all I have been doing is said pitch meeting guy is describing the Fallout series, Amazon Prime's latest entry into their ever-growing catalog that, in a way, sneaks up on you in regards to how many quality pieces of media they've been able to produce in the last couple years of the streaming wars, with the platform just this year holding down shows for its general audiences like Reacher, Invincible Season 2, the aforementioned Fallout, The Boys Season 4, and with the Rings of Power Season 2 set the release later on this year. And while The Boys Season 4 might have missed the mark a bit, especially compared to the lack of nuance and quality of its sister seasons, it's just more of an unfortunate stain on a rather otherwise clean white tee of a platform. And for all of those reasons that I just mentioned, which I'll just list here on screen in order to really summarize my yapping and generalized point, the Borderlands movie pretty much fails on every single aspect of what it means to develop a relationship with the audience and obviously lacks competency in the room of the people who were in charge. The writing and dialogue is absolute dog shit to say the least. The characters, while I don't grade as harshly as others in the audience because I'm not as passionate or even aware of the miscastings, but characters and character writing that doesn't seem to have the proper screen time in order to properly flesh out the characters for the audience to really engage with, a world that while yes, colorful, unique, and interesting, a world that after only 90 minutes, I as a casual audience member was just as unknowledgeable as I was when I first entered the theater, set pieces and fight choreography that, again, I won't grade nearly as harshly as others, but it definitely did need some more time in the oven, and a narrative that doesn't have to be so streamlined to a point of exposition dumps and over-the-top narration. Fuck me, that first 10 to 15 minutes was a brutal watch. But these are all aspects that I believe could be mitigated in a different form of media, and while that's obviously not for certain, seeing how all of these shows that I mentioned before are success stories that have been made by people that obviously care about the source material more than the blokes involved with this pile of doo-doo, the fact still remains that I think an adaptation into a streaming show would have at least given the IP a chance into etching its name into a genre that again is thriving right now, and I just find it unfortunate when it comes to IPs like this, because you only really have one chance to hit the media sphere running before the audience as a whole forgets your blunder or flop even existed. Just ask the Halo series, and that's one of the biggest and most recognizable IPs of all time, helmed by one of the most iconic characters of all time. And now because of the studio, some of the actors involved, and the writing team that didn't take this opportunity seriously, this IP overall will now hit the sunken place of the quote-unquote experimental wasteland of failed ideas that were only failures because of the people involved's own hubris. And just like with most flops and blunders when it comes to the entertainment world and the Hollywood landscape, the biggest blow is dealt to the audience members and to the fandom that has been patiently waiting for their favorite IP to get an on-screen adaptation they felt as if it deserved. It wasn't the first, and it won't be the last. But man, is it just unfortunate to see every single time. So in a ranking tier list that is still a name in progress, I actually got to do two movies here, and I guess it kind of works out seeing how they'll both be going in similar areas. Spoilers. Borderlands for relatively obvious reasons, and while I'm sure for many of the actual fans of the game, and for the people that have seen Moist Critical's video ripping it a new butthole, it's shit on a screen for sure. But I don't know. It's a movie that I know was a movie that wasn't supposed to be taken seriously, which is a knock on the movie overall. But I like Jack Black, and there's kind of no way that this movie is going into the same category as Rebel Moon Part 2. I'm also going to be placing Trap in Night Shyamalan's latest melatonin gummy cosplaying as a movie into the Toontown category as well. I thought about making a full video on this, pretty much just doing the same thing as Charlie did with Borderlands. 
but I just couldn't. There simply was just no point. Overall, the characters in that movie just aren't characters, but AI. Again, also cosplaying as real human beings. The AI people in that movie are so unbelievably dumb that you as an audience member have to suspend your disbelief so much to the point that your last brain cell forms separation anxiety from the lack of your other brain cells. It is truly so dumb, but not nearly as bad as old, which I think is the worst and most boring movie that I have ever seen in the history of my life. So, hooray, I guess. Two Toontown movies back-to-back -back weeks. August is shaping up to be a goofy month, huh? Anyway, of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. And if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'll leave a link to my Twitter and letterbox in the description just in case you guys want to go check that out. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that is all the words I got for you today. Bye.